Hey everybody, welcome to Friday Fruit Clips. This is episode number 10 in my weekly series where I feature a few false teachers, false prophets, or bullies who just teach false doctrine, who shipwreck the faith of thousands and even millions. Now, I've got some clips picked out today. I'm featuring three of these false teachers, some of whom you may have seen before, but that's okay. We want to, again, be a presence to be an opponent to these false teachers, these false prophets. So with that, strap in. Here we go. All right, so first up, we've got one Emma Stark. She fancies herself a prophetic warrior. She even wrote a book with that same title. Now, Brother John Elping recently did a video on her. You can see in the thumbnail what it says. Prophet Emma Stark, God created woman as warrior, a protector and restrainer of man. Wow. So today we're going to listen to Emma tell us a story. It's one of her main talents as a professional deceiver. Storytelling. It works. The people listening, they glue into their computers, their ears wide open, their eyes bugged out wide, ready to receive these fantastic stories of the supernatural. And it always happens, you know, somewhere else where you're not. But that doesn't matter. The listeners love it. And how does this benefit Emma? Well, it helps her monetarily. The more fantastic stories she can tell, the better she's going to do. And this is for filthy lucre. So strap in here and let's listen to Emma tell her story about invisibility hider angels. That's right. Invisibility Hider Angels. Get ready, here we go. Hello, gorgeous people. My name is Emma Stark, and I'm from Glasgow Prophetic Centre in Bonnie, Scotland. So warm Celtic greetings. I love talking about the power of God. And I want to tell you an amazing story where an angel made me and my two friends completely invisible one evening. Hold on to your seats, because this is a wild story. One morning, my husband, David, had left early to go on a red-eye flight down to London. And this demonic ugly, territorial, strong man appeared at the end of my bed. So I'm alone in my bedroom and he's just eyeballing me and I'm thinking, what are you doing here? But it wasn't like a stick demon that you just kick out the way. It was very definitely him watching me and me watching him and getting a sense of the battle that we were about to go into uh, later that day. Well, I got out of my bed, fell to my knees, uh, turned my back to him and worshipped Jesus. And the demon just left as fast as he'd come because he can't stand being in the presence of one. All right, so, so far this makes sense right? Demon appears in her room. She gets on her knees and begins to worship Jesus. And the demon can't stand it. And he flees. It makes sense. It sounds good so far. Remember this because we're going to come back to this in a minute or two. And a real quick note, I wanted to just let you know that I have sped up uh, her so that we can get through this a little bit faster. I'm not trying to be mean. Worship. My husband comes back and my friend and he and I, the three of us, are sitting in a restaurant. We've just ordered our food and I'm telling them about this strongman demon appearing in the morning. As soon as I say that, he reappears. And my husband can see my eyes pop out of my head as the demon opens his coat and all his minion demons roll towards Okay, question. Do demons wear coats? I don't know. I just thought of this. You got a demon in here wearing a coat. Next question. What kind of a coat is it? Is it a trench coat? Is it a regular coat? Just, again, wow, was he cold? Is that why? Or when you look at the coat, was it stylish? Was it dirty? Was it, uh, you know, what brand was it? Was it a Columbia, North Face, J.C. Penney's? I don't know. Just so many questions. Ask yourself these things, because uh, it sounds kind of ridiculous to me. But he opens the coat. And according to Emma here, a bunch of midget, or I should say, uh, <laughs> sorry, minion demons are hiding in the coat. I guess that that was the purpose of wearing a coat. Is that really a thing? I guess it is. You, you're just going to have to take Emma's word for it. Me. The restaurant is full of these demons. And my husband says to me, Emma, what do you want to do? I can see that you're seeing in the spirit realm and something is disturbing you. Do you want us to leave? And I say to my husband, there is no way I am leaving. I'm here to eat my food, which we've just ordered. 
so again, I have a question. She's not fearful enough to abandon her food or to be even alarmed at that moment because she said, no way, I'm not leaving. The food has been ordered. I am starving. So I'm not going to let this demon scare us away. Food is way more important at this moment. She wasn't even worried how serious could this situation have even been. See how ridiculous this is? But something strange then happened. I turned to my guardian angel to have a conversation to say, how do you want to navigate this demonic soup that's in front? All right, so a couple of things here. Number one, Emma seems confused. She doesn't know what to do. What do I do? She says she turns to her guardian angel because, you know, that's a... In Emma's life, that's a hugely natural thing. She's so spiritually in tune that not only can she identify her guardian angel, well, she just has full-blown conversations, even in a public diner. But all of a sudden, she's confused. She doesn't know what to do. She asks her guardian angel, how are we going to navigate through this demonic, I think she said, soup? Well, wait a second. I, I thought you knew what to do. Remember at the beginning, it was... Actually, fairly simple. You easily defeated this same demon when you got down on your knees in your bedroom and you worshipped Jesus. The demon fled. Is, isn't that a pretty, a pretty solid answer and a pretty solid solution? But no, 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 no. And do you know why? Well, because then the story wouldn't be this fantastic, right? I mean, if she would have just concluded this story with, well, we, you know, we all just started worshiping Jesus right there at the table, well, the demon would have fled and the story would have been over. But you see, that, that doesn't get her paid. She's got to embellish greater, more supernatural details so that the uh, listener gets more excited. And that's what this is. Of us. And as soon as I turn around, he's got his wings right up and they are around us. And I call him a Psalm 91 angel because it says in that scripture that Jesus hides us under wings and sends angels to protect us. So the angel is a hider angel from Psalm 91. All right, is that a thing? Wow. <laughs> First of all, look at these graphics. This is her. This is not me. Uh, is that a thing? Uh, a Psalm 91 hider angel? Now, I'm not going to get into this whole theological discussion. Can God hide you? Of course he can. The only thing I'm pointing out here today is that Emma is a storyteller, and this is all made up. God can do whatever he wants. But Emma, again, she wants you to believe that, I guess, this is a new class of angels. I've heard of seraphim. I've heard of cherubim, archangels. I've never heard of a, an actual hider angel. And by golly, it's a good thing that her guardian angel has this extra talent with these wings, apparently, that can hide you. What would have happened if her guardian angel wasn't a hider angel? You know, she turns to him and she says, Oh, what do we do? Hey, quick, uh, Mr. Guardian Angel, hide me, hide us. And the angel doesn't have that talent. He said, Well, I'd like to, Emma, but I, I haven't made it to that rank of hider angel, so I, I'm incapable. What would she have done then? I mean, this is all just so silly, isn't it? Look, look at her. This is just abhorrent and, and, again, feeds to the fantasy of the listener. And he's been with me for years. Well, his wings are up over the three of us. And from that moment, we become completely invisible. And I'm waving to get the, the um, waitress's attention to say, you know, where, where's our food? Nobody can see us. Nobody responds. I actually have to get out of the seat myself and go to the kitchen hatch, grab the food that we've ordered, and take it to our table ourselves. Well, at the end of the night, the restaurant is empty. The demon decides there's nothing he can do. He retreats. All his minion demons go with him. All the staff are mopping the floor. The chairs are actually upside down on the tables. And we are sitting in the very center of the restaurant. And as the demon goes, my hider angel drops his wings. Suddenly, there's a rush of all the staff and they say, oh, how did you three get into the restaurant? And they say, but you're at our prime table. How come nobody saw you? We've not seen you all night. You've been completely invisible. All right, so a couple more questions. This is so ridiculous. As Emma testifies that she was invisible under the wings of her hider angel, she raised her hand. She couldn't get service, apparently because the servers couldn't see her. They, they were invisible. So she gets up and she says she goes to get her own food from the kitchen hatch. 
did it occur to her to maybe question the servers as to why they weren't coming to her table? You know, when you or I go to a restaurant, there's a certain expectancy from the servers that, you know, we're here to eat, we're going to pay for this food, and your tip may very well depend on how good you serve us, right? That's a thing. So didn't she even question the chef or the cashier or the servers? Hey, where's our food? Why isn't anybody coming up? No, no, no. She, she just omits all that. And she says that she grabbed the food herself. Did nobody question her? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, I'm getting my food because the servers aren't bringing How did she know which, which dishes were hers? That could have been food for another table. See how dumb this is? But it, it sounds good, doesn't it? And, and, you know, they didn't worry about refills or napkins or condiment, condiments or anything like that. All right, one more note. Uh, she said, as the Hider Angel removed his cloaking invisible wings and they became visible again, that the staff freaked out a little bit here. And their conclusion, she said, the staff's conclusion was, you've been invisible. You've been invisible. <laughs> this is bananas. And is that true? And the answer, of course, is no. If you looked up and suddenly saw somebody there, a normal person would not conclude that, wow, you were invisible and, and all of a sudden you appeared. No. They would say something like, hey, where did you come from? Were you in the bathrooms? Did you just walk in and nobody saw you? Or they might say, hey, we're closed. Their first conclusion is not quote, you've been invisible. It's just so ridiculous. And then if they really thought that these people had the power, like, you know, X-Men to become invisible, wouldn't they more so have asked, hey, how did you do that? Are you guys magicians? That's what they would have said. Teach us how we can do invisible. But they didn't do that. So again, Emma, Oh, you should have uh, you should have prepared a better story here. But again, sadly, it works for the brainwashed listeners. All right, so we're going to go ahead and conclude that ridiculous story. But before we're done with Emma Stark, I wanted to bring to your attention one of her shticks. She paddles to anyone who would listen something called the vomiting anointing. And yes, it is disgusting. It's ridiculous. We don't need to listen to any of the content of what she describes this as. We can already conclude from the title that it is unbiblical, it is unholy, and quite frankly, this mocks our living God. This is a non-existent thing that she made up. It doesn't matter how you explain it, it's disgusting. And imagine trying to share this with somebody uh, like an unbeliever, one of your friends. Let's say a guy named Roger. Roger comes to you and says, I don't know, man, I feel broken, I feel desperate, and I'm really hurting. Oh, Roger, let me, uh, let me share the, the gospel with you. First, we're going to start with the vomiting anointing. Well, Roger's going to look at you like you're nuts, and he's going to conclude, he'll conclude that Christianity is false just based on this. But this is what false teachers and false prophets do. They want to bring you something new. It doesn't matter the shock value of it. In this case, it's disgusting. Now, certainly pray for Emma Stark. Pray she'll repent from this nonsense and come to the true gospel of Jesus Christ. But until then, stay away from her. All right, next up, we've got Lois Vogel Sharp, who is a confirmed false prophet. This is not a debate. I've done one video on her. You can find that in my library. Alabama Woodsman also did a five-part series on her, exposing her very nicely. But we want, again, to expose her uh, with even some older clips because we, again, need to push back against these false prophets who make merchandise of people who shipwreck the faith of tens of thousands of people. So we're going to play a little montage. We'll comment as we go. Uh, and I, I do have to give you a warning. Get your, get your cringe hats ready because this is Cringe beyond measure. You've been warned. Pick your side. You better pick the people that you're truly going to believe on listening to the Father. I am the real deal. God does 
speak to me. He's been speaking to me for a long time. I am Esther that Kim Clement talked about. Say yes to Esther, yes to Esther, because I am the one that's called during this time frame of President Trump to lead you to the truth, to lead America back to healing, to stand up to the cartels, to stand up against evil and rebuke it right to its face in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. He's our Lord and he's our God. And I have been given the anointing during this time frame to do this. That's the time frame we're in. And I am here as a prophetess of the Lord to lead the people to the truth. But I am airing on what God has been showing me. There's no way this is all coincidence that I'm getting all this info. And this is why he's setting me up. He's setting me up to take my next move. Wow. She got this right. She stood on the side and God was saying all these things through Lois. So this is Lois exalting herself. She exalts herself. And that's very common with, uh, gosh, I'd say the majority of false prophets. They're always the ones who are coming out and doing their prophecy fulfilled videos. Well, Lois is not going to be able to do that in this case. Some of these clips are from when uh, the election was taking place back in 2020. And you're going to hear her prophesy that Trump was going to win. But here she exalts herself. And she, look at her. Look at her right here. She's like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Don't doubt Lois, right? I'm from New York. I'm a fiery little firecracker. I'm going to break your kneecaps if you don't listen to me. I'm a prophet of God. Anyway, the New York accent, very fun to do. I do it quite often. People get mad. They're like, Drew, why do you have to mock her? I'm not mocking her accent. I think it's fun to do. I think, you know, Lois, if she was a normal person, she would probably be pretty fun just listening to her accent. So I'm not mocking her accent. I'm mocking her false prophecy. But here she exalts herself, and uh, it just doesn't work. She calls herself Esther. I'm Esther. Say yes to Esther. Yes to Esther. She cites Kim Clement. Just very narcissistic. So let's listen to some more clips from Lois. In order for me to rise up and be what I'm meant to be, I have to be right on with things that everybody thinks is going the opposite way. Those of you who have walked away and stopped believing that Lois has helped to save the day will all be in dismay when you see she was right as the storm plunges in through the night and you will know she was right and you will jump back on board this boat as it will surely float. So here we are once again. Are we foe? Or are we friend? And do you still believe or are you starting to flee? Trust in me. I am your father. Why would I bother to write down these poems that rhyme at the drop of a dime, which I have shown to Lois over and over again, reassuring her that it all does make sense? He's telling us that he stepped in to help this happen because we prayed and we asked him to help us. And he's then declaring... God, the Father, to shine down his light from above on the land that we all love. Stand beside her and guide her. It's the song. He's amazing to me how he does all this. We win this. Trump will win this. Save me. My people, I see your grief and your tears. I am telling you there is nothing to fear. It may seem that evil has won, but I tell you, my plan is not done. The number 214 has been sitting for all to see. It represents you and represents me. 124, death to life. It began with tears and ended with delight. You already know how things can go down when I am at work. The enemy tries to make you look like a jerk. First you lose, it seems I have snoozed. But to co the comeback is great, and I am never too late. All right, so that's Lois Vogel Sharp. She's a confirmed false prophet. Again, please go look at the video I have in my library. I made it about, uh, I think, about two years ago. And certainly check out Alabama Woodsman's uh, five-part series he did on her. But I wanted, again, to document this. And Lois, if you're listening, I wrote you a poem. That's right. I had to dig deep. I had to dig deep to get to your level. 
Whew, and it wasn't easy. That that kind of talent just can't, uh, you know, doesn't uh, find very many people. But I wanted to put this in a way that you could understand this. And by the way, this rhyme that I wrote certainly would be classified as dope. This is my dope rhyme. And I'm going to use my New York accent so that maybe that'll help you understand it. So you ready? Here we go. This is my poem to you, Lois. Lois, your false prophecies, they make me sick. I just want to say ick. Your words, they make me feel like my head just got kicked. Please, would you just stop before my eardrums pop? Your prophetic lies, well, they only flop. Your prophecies are not real. So tell me, hey, what's the deal? They cause people to slip on a banana peel. You clearly don't hear from God. Your prophetic lies, well, they smell like expired cod. So please just go away and promise there you'll stay. Everything's going to be okay. So how about it? What do you say? <laughs> so there's my uh, message for Lois. Lois, I hope you hear this. Uh, of course, we make a, a little bit of merry about this because sometimes you just have to laugh. But false prophecy is no laughing matter. So certainly pray for Lois that will, uh, God will shut this down. Because again, the internet is such a tool to deceive people. All right, so with that, we are going to move on. All right, so next up, we've got somebody by the name of William Tapley. You can see his channel here, Third Eagle Books. Right up front, I want to point out to you some of the stats. You can see he's got 52,000 subs, 3,000 videos. This guy has been at it for a while. When we go to his About section, you can see how many people this man has reached. And this really matters. Over 22 million people. He's been on YouTube since 2008. So definitely a large reach, and that is very scary after I show you what's going on with this guy. Now, as we look at his videos, you can see some of the titles. This guy, by the way, is a raging Catholic, but I would call him a rebellious Catholic because he has, the best I can tell, replaced our Messiah Jesus Christ indeed with Mary to the highest level that I've ever, ever seen. And uh, I'm going to show you some clips here in just a second. But this guy uh, still is a huge trumper. If we go to his live videos here, you can see, uh, let's see this one right here. Pray for Donald Trump. He loves Donald Trump. And, um, uh, here it is. Pray for Donald Trump, who is persecuted and prosecuted. All right, so let's take a, a look at the first clip. And you're going to see right off the bat how he absolutely adores Mary. And listen to this blasphemy. Welcome to our World Family Rosary Network, where we give praise and honor to the Blessed Virgin Mary, because she is the woman prophesied way back in Genesis 3.15, to crush the head of the serpent. And no other Christian denomination, including my own Roman Catholic faith, teaches that truth any longer. All of Christianity is under the great delusion of these end times. Satan does not want you to know how he will be defeated. They all claim that Jesus will crush the head of the serpent, including Father Mitch Paqua, including EWTN. But nowhere in Scripture is there ever any physical contact between Jesus and either the Antichrist or Satan. All the prefigurings are between a woman and an evil entity. So this guy, you heard the blasphemy. He said that it's going to be Mary that is going to crush the head of the serpent. This, again, it's blasphemy. It's You can't even, for somebody like this, I would absolutely say that he is not just erring in his doctrine i mean badly but this guy is certifiable and i genuinely mean that he is bonkers crazy he is mentally challenged or certifiable i'm not trying to be mean he is that crazy 
And look at the idols that he's got behind him. He absolutely worships Mary. But to utter and teach stuff like this to those that would listen to him, again, uh, I, I shudder for this man on Judgment Day to teach such blasphemy that Mary is going to be our Savior. That's what he's saying. He's assigned full-blown, over-the-top divinity to Mary. It's crazy. Welcome to Revelation Unraveled. I'm your host, William Tapley, also known as the Third Eagle of the Apocalypse and the co-prophet of these end times. Of course, it's always a genuine sign of spectacular delusion when social media YouTubers or Facebookers they come on video and they assign themselves, you know, sort of these uh, grandiose titles. In this case, he's assigned himself the titles of Third Eagle of the Apocalypse and Co-Prophet of the End Times. Cuckoo! Strike. And on one side is an image of Donald Trump. You can see his chin. And you can see his nose, you can see his forehead, and you can see his double chin. He's a little overweight. The other side is a picture of, maybe you can see it, Moses. Notice his chin, notice his kind of smashed in nose. Let me show you that. All right, so in this particular clip, uh, what he's selling the listener in all of his actual madness is when apparently lightning struck the Vatican, that it was God's direction that this lightning strike would display the profiles of both Donald Trump on this side and Moses on this side. And of course, he says that, well, you can see Moses' nose. It's a smashed in nose. It's Boy, if I wasn't so troubled by this all, uh, it would be very funny. But I, I'm really kind of, my emotions are torn at this time. This is absolute madness on full display. Now that Barack Obama is coming to the end of his presidency, is he also coming to the end of his life? And I believe that is exactly what Daniel prophesies in his chapter number four. He verifies what Natan is saying in his vision. Chapter number four is all about Barack Obama. Now, the clip you just heard was from this video. And I'm not sure if many of you may have remembered. This is from seven years ago. This is from 2016. You can see the title, Jewish Teen Natan Reveals Who Will Kill Obama. Now, I don't know how this video stayed up because of you know how touchy YouTube is. But this video, look at the view count, it actually accrued 752,000 views. And here he's talking about the death of a former president. I don't wanna say, I don't even wanna say his name, they're gonna take my video down. Again, look at the idols in the background. Absolutely bananas. Uh, so this was very disturbing. And again, it still stays up, but I'll play, uh, uh, he was of course, isogeting Obama into the book of Daniel. And again, this is a big thing with him. One thing that I found kind of funny is when I scroll down, I see that I left a, a comment there from seven years ago, and you can read what it says. <laughs> I don't remember leaving that, but again, yeah, Tapley, he's been around for a long time, and uh, his videos would pop up once in a while. This is one of those that would pop up on my feed. And, and he is. How can anybody take him seriously? At this time, I didn't really believe he had that much actual madness in him. Uh, although the other alternative is he could clearly be doing this on purpose because he seems to be able to dress himself and, you know, feed himself. So I don't know. Just uh, wanted to point this out. All right, let's listen to the, the uh, next crazy clip. Natan goes on to say he is a very prominent person. Everyone will recognize him. I have suggested on this program that he is, in fact, the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and that Netanyahu himself will be killed, but he will resurrect as the prophet Elijah. All right, so here he says that Benjamin Netanyahu was going to be censored. 
and that he was going to be resurrected as Elijah. This is reincarnation. I'm stating the obvious. I mean, there's there are no boundaries for this guy. Certainly, he is not abiding in any of uh, biblical scripture. There is no foundational boundaries there for him when it comes to the Holy Bible. He just goes on his feelings, and I, I absolutely believe that he is being heavily influenced by New Age spirits or New Age doctrines. Because anything goes for this guy. He is crazy. Let me show you something. He's got a couple of videos from a couple of years ago on Dana Coverstone. You guys remember Dana Coverstone, right? Epic false prophet by way of his false fake dreams, right? Dana Coverstone never prophesied anything correctly. But William Tapley here was so enthralled, so enamored by Dana Coverstone's prophetic dreams. I kid you not, you can go look at this video, although I encourage you not to. But if you don't believe me, in this video and others, he actually took Dana Coverstone's dreams and he assigned chapters and verses to Dana Coverstone's words. I'm not kidding. And here he's got, uh, apparently he's got some people that he's teaching in the, in the room with him there. But this is how obsessed he became with Dana Coverstone at that time. So talk about being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, right? It is astonishing. Now, what I'm going to show you next, <laughs> I want to give you a cringe alert. Get ready. Get your cringe hats on. Because this will only confirm what I've been saying, that this guy is certifiable. This is actually video on his channel. You ready? World War Three. That's Obama's plan for you and me. What a crock. It's the only hope he's got. He can't be elected on his record. It's a crime. He should resign. That's why I'm voting for Mitt Romney. He's a hero in my mind. So again, this guy, certifiable and dangerous uh, regardless, certainly pray for him, uh, whether he's doing this on purpose or uh, whether he actually is just crazy. I don't know. I'm, I'm grateful that I don't live next door to him. That's for sure. Because I, I would genuinely fear for my safety and or my life. But uh, let's look at some scripture. We can read in Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and by cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Look at the second half of this, talking about winds of doctrine. Slight of men. This is what deceivers do. Slight is deception by the deception of men and cunning craftiness. These are very, sometimes they're not easily detectable. Now, clearly with William Tapley, they're, they should be very easily detectable. But somebody like Emma Stark, when they tell these fantastic supernatural stories, and they put music in the background and they add graphics. And then, you know, the uh, storyteller has talent. You could certainly classify that as cunning craftiness. And yes, they do lie in wait to deceive. They target once solid biblical believing Christians. And they're just waiting to deceive you. In the book of Second Peter chapter 2. Look at verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with fiend words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. This is a great chapter, this entire chapter. Uh, go read it because it really speaks to what was happening then and what is happening now. All right, well, that's going to wrap up this episode of Friday Fruit Clips. Like you're seeing in the picture, be careful of your selections. Make sure that whoever you listen to always 
can be confirmed and lines up with the Holy Word of God. So in closing, I just got done checking with my staff and they've informed me that we're ready to roll credits. And so I thought it only fitting that as we close this off today that we hear another song from William Tapley, the third eagle of the apocalypse and the co-prophet of the end times. So William, we're going to throw it over to you as we roll credits. Take it away, fella. America is Babylon. She rides a beast, the beast is sore, and now that beast will burn that whore. It's prophesied, it's prophesied, when Babylon the whore gets fried, the merchants weep, the merchants cry, when Babylon the whore gets fried. He's got four heads. 